Hey guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. My name is Amanda and today I'm going to share with you a try a chapter tag. So you'll notice that I'm in a little bit of a different um, environment. Um, I'm starting to have to get creative with where I'm filming at because the kids are kind of everywhere the, um, these days and that's fine. Um, it just makes things a little bit less um, organized, let's say, and structured, but that's okay. Um, so today I wanted to share with you one of the things that I wanted to do for middle grade March, which is the try a chapter tag. So I decided one of my goals for the year, one of my annual reading goals was to read more cover buys. And by that, I just mean, you know, I walk into either a store, a thrift store, a library, and I'm just picking books up because I am drawn to them, not because I've heard anybody talk about them, not because um, they were recommended to me, um, not because they are recommended by a librarian, um, anything like that, but just because I'm walking through and just things I'm naturally gravitating towards. And so I decided that one of the, t during one of my library trips, um, there are many that happen within the month. Um, but during one of the ones that I did prior to middle grade March, I went in with the sole reason of going in to peruse covers. And I would just pull anything off the shelf that looked appealing to me. Um, it didn't matter what it was. And then I would sit down and after I pulled it because it looked appealing to me, I would read the synopsis of it. And if it still sounded interesting to me, I would check it out and bring it home. And so my game plan now is I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven books here. My game plan is to read the first chapter of each of these books and then determine if I want to keep going with it. So it's not going to be like a typical try a chapter tag where I'm only picking one book out of the stack. Um, I'm not going to limit myself to one book. I'm just going to try the first chapter of each of these and decide if I want to keep going or not and just kind of see where that takes me. So really quick, the books that I have here, I have um, The Wonderling by Myra Bartok. I have no idea if I pronounced that right or not. And you'll have to excuse the weird lighting. Um, I'm in my son's room and it's just kind of, there's a window behind me, which I normally don't do and all of that. But um, this one just looked really fun. Um, and so that's the cover of that one. Let's see, where should I set these after I get done with them? I don't know. Um, all right, and then here we have The Girl Who Sailed the Stars by, by Matilda Woods. So this cover I really liked, but then the inside of it, the entire, inside of it is blue. Like you can't really tell, but the writing is all blue. There's little illustrations all around the outside of the pages. It just looked really, really fun. All right. The next one is kind of cheating because it is an award nominee this year. And that is Towers Falling by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Um, this is a Mod Heart Lovelace nominee. This is a Minnesota award um, that they do for middle grade books. And this is about 9-11. Um, and so this one just sounded interesting, looked interesting. Um, I also have here Jed and the Junkyard War by Stephen Bowles. Um, this is the cover. Um, and honestly, a lot of these, the spines are what stands out. And, you know, because when they're shelved on the uh, bookshelves at the library, that's what kind of stands out. But this one has to do with... Um, a junkyard war. It's just a war about junk and it has some fun illustrations in it. Um, so I don't know, but it's like brand new. So I have no idea. So I have that one. I have Walking Miss Millie by Tamara Bundy. And then, so this is the cover and this one I think has to do with, um, like set, it's set in the sixties, maybe. I don't remember. Um, and it has to do with civil rights. I don't remember if it's actually set in the 60s or not, now that I'm saying that. But after I already checked this out, because I just checked it out, I saw a couple other people mention it on Instagram. But I left it in the stack because I had never heard of it prior to me checking it out. So I ha have that one. Um, I have The Apple Tart of Hope, There's Always a Crumb Left by Sarah Moore Fitzgerald. How pretty is this cover? I'm sorry, these like... And I'm rocking a little bit because I'm sitting in a rocking chair. But these types of covers, I just absolutely love. And I honestly have no idea what this book is about. 
Um, I don't remember what the synopsis of it is. And then the last one that I grabbed is Moo by Sharon Creech. And this was the spine. And I saw the spine and it stuck out to me. And then I saw that it was by Sharon Creech who wrote Walk Two Moons, which I read last year and loved. Um, so it just sounded fun. And then inside it's like kind of in verse, kind of not. There's some pages that are like weird. I don't know. It just sounded... It looks really fun. So I grabbed that one as well. So the game plan is to sit and read the first chapter of each of these. Um, I don't really know what that's going to look like because some of these, the chapters probably are pretty short. I'm going to say that if the chapter is less than 10 pages, I'm going to read at least 10 pages of the book. Um, because especially with middle grade, I think it's hard to really get in, like get a feel for it until you've read that much of it. Um, so those are the books that I'm going to sit here and read right now. So I will probably start at the top of my new stack, which is now Moo, um, and let you know what I think of this when I get done with the first 10 pages. All right, so I just finished the first nine pages of Moo. Um, it was a couple of chapters, and part of this is in verse, and part of it isn't. It's very interesting, um, but so far the main character, I don't even know if she said what her name was now that I'm thinking about it. Um, Rena is 12 years old and they live, it sounds like New York City. Um, it says that she lived in a city for a time and her parents have both been laid off from their jobs at a newspaper. And so they decide that they're going to move to Maine. And that's kind of where we're at with it. Um, but I have a feeling this has to do with living out in rural Maine after living in New York City and the adjustment that comes with that. That's kind of what I'm expecting. But I love the dichotomy of it being a partly in verse and partly not. Um, so I think that I will probably continue with this, but I'm gonna see kind of what else I read um, because I would like to limit this to maybe choosing half of the books. So like, I'm gonna allow myself to pick four to keep reading and then three um, to set aside for now. Um, it doesn't mean I'll never get back to them, but for now set aside. So this one is still in contention. Um, the next one I'm going to try is The Apple Tart of Hope um, by Sarah Moore Fitzgerald. So I will check back in with you after I read the first 10 pages of this. And this one, oh my goodness, is like super tiny font. So this might take a minute. So, um, but anyway, but the book is short overall. So who knows? I'll check in with you in just a second. Okay. So I just finished the first chapter of this, um, the apple tart of hope, and I'm not going to keep going with this one. Um, first of all, the main characters in this are 14 years old, which to me is YA. Um, and this definitely reads more YA. Um, it is about this girl who was vacationing somewhere, I don't know where she was at yet, but she comes home because there is news that her best friend has supposedly committed suicide. Um, so I read the synopsis and it said that his bike was found at sea off the end of a pier and so the community is assuming that he committed suicide and that he's gone. And so the chapter uh, centered around a prayer service that they had and it was just the writing was dark and very intense and I just not what I need right now in my life so I'm setting this one to the side as a no. Moving on to the next one this one I have more hope for and that is Walking Miss Millie by Tamara Bundy um, and so I will check in with you after I've read the first chapter of this one. All right, so I just finished the first two chapters of Walking with Miss Millie because the first chapter was only four pages. Um, this one I'm loving. This is, I can't remember once again, names are hard, Alice in fifth, beginning of fifth grade, I'm guessing, is moving to move in with her grandmother who um, her memory is starting to go. And so her mom decides to move in with her grandmother. Her dad has left and 
her, I'm guess I'm thinking that Miss Millie is one of the neighbors of her grandmother. Um, the end of the second chapter basically was like, that was my almost first conversation with Miss Millie. And so it's kind of reminiscent of um, Until Tomorrow, Mr. Marsworth. Um, it's not epistolary, but it's a younger girl having a conversation or a series of conversations with an elderly person. And so I'm thinking this is going to be fantastic. Um, yeah, so I'm, this is going on the yes pile. Um, all right, and then we're moving on to Jed and the Junkyard War. Um, we'll see, this is, it's marked as science fiction, so this will definitely be different, um, not a contemporary at all, um, something a little different, but we'll see. So I'll check in with you when I have read a little bit of it. All right, so I just finished the first chapter of Jed and the Junkyard War. And it kind of does like a little bit of a flash forward and then comes back to present time. And so you kind of get the flash forward of more of the like steampunk, like batteries and sprockets and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then you come back to present time and um, it comes to Jed and his mom blindfolds him and leaves him in the middle of Yellowstone the day before his birthday. And he's supposed to make his way, find his way home. I don't know. It's not really what I'm in the mood for right now. The writing style wasn't really like um, pulling me in like I was hoping it would. Um, I was looking for something a little bit more fantastical along the veins of like Nevermore and Wondersmith and that sort of thing. And this just wasn't quite hitting the mark for me. Um, so I'm going to put this in the no pile for now. Sorry if you can hear the kids. Um, but I'm going to put this in the no pile for now and maybe revisit it later. We'll see. Um, but it's going to go in the no pile for now. And then, sorry, like, woo. And then um, the next one that I have is Towers Falling um, by Jewel Parker Rhodes. And this is the like 9-11 centered one. So I will check back in with you once I have read a little bit of this one. All right, so I just finished the first two chapters of Tower, or first one chapter, two chapters? Two chapters of Towers Falling and I love it so far. Um, this is definitely probably one for older middle grade, um, but we're following a girl, Deja, who her family is homeless and they're living in a shelter. Um, it's a family of five. They're living in one room and it's post 9-11. Her dad lost his job and is depressed and is basically not getting out of bed at all. And her mom is trying to work enough to pay for food. Um, it's barely covering the food. Um, she has two younger siblings that she's primarily responsible for. Um, and she just pretty much hates all of it. And so that's kind of where we're at with this. Um, on the description on the back, there seems to be like an assignment about writing about the sky, the change in the skyline um, since 9-11. And so I'm thinking that that's kind of the direction that this will go and kind of learning more about Deja and who she is and her links maybe to 9-11. Um, but I absolutely am loving this. This is going in the yes pile. Um, so now we are moving on ooh, to The Girl Who Sailed the Stars. Um, so I will check in with you after I've read a little bit of this one. I'm really excited. Okay, so I just finished the first two chapters of The Girl Who Sailed the Stars. Um, I love this. This is so whimsical. Um, the first couple of chapters we're talking about, the first chapter is titled um, The Village of 1000 Ships. And it's all about this little town in the north, very, very far north. I'm thinking like Norway, Finland area is probably where the inspiration for this came from. Um, but it's this little town and there are no trees around. So when the first person went to the town or discovered it or whatever, um, he didn't have anything to build a house out of. So he tried building it out of a few different things and finally broke apart his ship and built his house out of his ship. But it, every time, like, or after he had it built, though, it was always wet and it always rocked back and forth just like his ship had. And so, um, anyway, so after that, they started building all of the houses in the towns out of ships or all the buildings in the town out of sunken ships. And so all the buildings in the town were like this, where they were wet and they creaked and they swayed back and forth. And it was just really fun. 
Um, and then the second chapter was about a fortune teller coming to the village and telling one of the captains that after having six disappointing daughters, he would have a brave, bold son. And um, that's kind of the starting off point of this, but it just is so full of just like fairy tale ness that I love so much. So I'm putting this in my yes pile um, for now and I am excited to keep reading that and the illustrations like I said this one's just fun because every single page has the illustrations around it that are like it, like it's under the sea almost um, and then there are some let's see if I can find one full page illustrations as well which now I'm not gonna be able to find one there's one um, full page illustrations as well that are also done in that blue so anyway just kind of a different full of whimsy one and then I have the wonderling um so yeah I will check back in with you after I read a little bit of this this is the last book that I have to read all right so I just finished the first chapter of the wonderling and I think I'm going to set this one aside um I already have four that I had said yes to and I like all the other four better than this one. Um, so this is about a fox who, the world that this is set in, there is like a, not a definitive line between animal and human. And so he looks like a fox, but he walks upright and he's missing an ear and he doesn't have a tail and his nose is more like a dog and he's twitchy like a rabbit. So even though he's a fox, they're not really sure what kind of creature he is. Um, but it's about, I think, this school that, like, unknown creatures are sent to. Um, and so I'm just going to set this one aside. I may end up picking this one up in the future, but for now, I'm just not into it. Um, so ironically enough, three of the four that I chose to hold on to are all contemporaries, which is not super surprising. Um, so I have uh, The Girl Who Sailed the Stars. I have... Tower, fa Towers Falling, um, Walking with Miss Millie, and Moo by Sharon Creech. So these are the four that I am going to continue reading. Um, I will probably, these will be included in my end of month wrap up um, because we're already halfway through the month. So look forward to that. And yeah, if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear your opinions on them. If you have read any of the other three that I decided to not continue with, um, I'd love to hear your opinions on that as well. Um, and yeah, other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya. Mm -hmm.